here we enter September, October of 43. Yeah, I know we're going real slow here. Uh, politically, the weather wasn't good, so Germany chose not to spend. They may declare war if the weather clears up, but right now there's rain going through. Um, Italy's kind of like, shit, man, come on, I need you, I need the Navy. <laughs> Uh, because the, Italian, the German Navy actually outclasses the British Navy out here. The only thing it's weak in, and this is the key thing, is in aircraft carriers. And the rain may actually suit them well for that. Of course, the Brits don't have to declare war, but if they don't take their free declaration of, their reactive declaration of war, uh, they have to actually take an action for it. And that costs points, a uh, significant amount of points. Um, Italy, though, did take an action, and they called Iraq into the war. Whoop whoop, did they really need this? Not really. They were getting the resources from Iraq, but it gives them the troops from Iraq. Uh, it gives them free passage through Iraq because they're fully in the war, and that'll give them a position to uh, possibly launch attacks. First of all, they can grab Kuwait. Secondly, they can launch attacks on uh, Persia, who they totally created an enmity with by bringing Iraq in. And the third thing is it allowed them to trigger Saudi Arabia getting Saudis on top of the Italians now. Um, I don't want to bring the Saudis in. They're not worth the five bucks. Neither was Iraq in terms of the troops that I'm getting. But the big reason the Saudis aren't worth it, but I wanted to bring them in, is look, they bring me in oil. You know? <laughs> and that's awesome. Uh, I do have to use ships to grab that oil, though. That's the only problem with it. And I right now don't have the shipping. But, in the long run, actually I can trace it to here and rail it. So, uh, actually I don't know that I need ships. Except that this is swamp, and I don't think I can trace. I think swamp costs more. Uh, one in three... Ooh, that aircraft carrier ought to really get out of the sea. They don't blow in there. Um, swamp is fine for uh, tracing supply through. This thing has only a speed of three. One, two, three. I guess we go to Togo. Uh, I have a lot of planes being built or in the reserve pool that are coming around recycling. <laughs> we'll see if it's enough. Here's, for example, the Japanese air buildup. Much of that is carrier air. I don't think the top unit is. Oh yeah, it is. Um, to try to replenish their diminished supply. The US has a hugely diminished supply. It has to rec reconstitute. And to some extent, we were able to throw away and burn some kind of crappy units. I found some Romanians who should have been in the German force pool, uh, <laughs> and they've been added to it. Uh, but other than that, yeah, we're ready to rock, I guess. On the initiative track here, uh, the Axis chose, they got a good roll and they chose to go late in the turn with the hope of padding their initiative for later on when it's more important. With the weather kind of turning bad, they want to try to take the advantage, maybe the uh, Commonwealth will get dropped an initiative level. Maybe the Axis will get a bonus. Either one is great. Uh, but that meant the Russians got to solidify their line here. There was some opportunity maybe for an attack, but it's in the rain and uh, it didn't really look good. I, I want to launch, you know, that massive airstrike in good weather before I do <laughs> an attack. Now that may not happen here in September, October in the Arctic front, but we'll see. The big news is the U.S. made a landing on some unnamed island over here in the Bonin Islands, not Iwo Jima, actually strategically more important because it gets me right on the Japanese coast, which is the reason why it seemed uh, a valuable uh, take. Actually, I've got one more land move, so we'll keep marching our way up uh, through the Philippines. I don't think we're not really in a position to attack here. We've basically got the Japanese contained in this little slice in the Philippines. Um, our naval moves were mainly made in support of uh, 
this invasion. You can see that exposes a US force, but because I did a combined move, and combined moves actually work really well for the island hopping. Um, you know, you can send out a task force, you get an attack with probably enough units, and then you get a couple extra naval and air moves maybe that you can use to reposition some forces and prepare for your next hop. But we're pretty much done with the island hopping. At this point, it's a question of, well, do we want to clear out, you know, Japanese holdings here in the Marianas or uh, uh, Palau or whatever? Or, you know, do we just largely ignore them because we can deny the Japanese supply there so they really can't do anything? Uh, so, yeah, that's where we're at now. I'm going to have to get a convoy here. I don't know if I have another one. Yeah, these guys down in New Zealand, they're not really terribly useful, so I can base there. But it means that I can't really use this as an air base right now until I, uh, until I rebase a, a convoy over there. i got to probably build some more convoys. Uh, I don't have enough. <laughs> For example, this fleet here in French Polynesia, and it's fine, it's just rebasing, is out of supply. That's great. Uh, I actually probably couldn't have unflipped them. They shouldn't have gone there. Um, anyway, uh, for the uh, Brits over here, they took a land move, actually, because they had to move a couple of units here. They wanted to continue their progress through Algeria primarily, but they've got these guys. They're going to probably spend a rail move uh, to get them up for the final uh, move on Tunisia. We might end up getting these territorials on our side. They're sort of a table for Vichy forces. I think as long as we don't like grab Corsica, we're safe because there's almost no Vichy territory. Which is kind of a neat thing. We can ignore the Vichy, not turn them opposed to us, and actually make an attack in the south of France or whatever that's significant. Um, but I, I, we're handing things over, we're handing the initiative over essentially to the Axis, which is where it belongs. Uh, they were just playing a little game up here with the initiative levels. Oh, I like to complain a lot. There, there's one thing that I, I know had bothered me in my mind, and I don't think I mentioned it, which is when you construct new units, they come in um, fully operable. Which is to say, if you take the result uh, on the combat result table of a blitz or a shatter result, which throws you over there, or a damaged ship being built or whatever, um, in fact, all ships, mechanized, armor, all this, planes, none of these cost oil to build, yet they get put on the board in, you know, effective and useful uh, situation. Now, I'm reading the World at War rules. Yeah, it's missing from my thing. The Third Reich, uh, the newest incarnation of it. And it's got one really nice uh, rule in it that I, I think I would port over to WIF. <laughs> Who knows, maybe it's in the new rules for WIF, because the two, uh, Third Reich, uh, Advanced Third Reich kind of was a, the answer to WIF. You know, Third Reich had been the original whiff came out with hey let's you know do this first of all with both theaters and with all all kinds of detail and uh advanced third reich added layers of detail to bring it you know more up to a modern uh more of a monster well what it does is when you produce the kinds of things that need oil I think this is, I'm not positive, but I know with ships and I think with planes and, some, and maybe other things. Um, when you bring them in, they come in inverted, just like inverted here, at the end of the turn. And then you have to spend oil to uninvert them. And I, I think that would be a very clean solution here. Now, it may mean, though, that there's not enough oil for say the Axis armies and stuff, so I'm not going to fiddle around with that. But I do have this idea of it doesn't make sense to build a mechanized army and you built it and got extra oil. Now if these things had a, an oil requirement in their build, 
that would be fine and I wouldn't mind so much with the shatter results because honestly you know most of the time you're able to defend yourself and you don't get flipped uh, <laughs> why bombing particularly hits your oil I'm not sure but you know I, I mean I'm willing to, to deal with a little bit of fudging but it seems very strange to me that a newly built armored unit a newly built plane whatever comes in fully functional and I think that idea of coming in flipped at the end of the turn rather than the beginning and then you know you pay your redeploy you get re your redeployment unfortunately the sequence of play doesn't quite match trying to do that the sequence of play has you unflip well before production uh, picks are even made and then of course you don't actually bring your units in until the beginning of a new turn so yeah whatever anyway this has been a tough day at work uh, i'm going to try to get some some impulses in here maybe maybe even finish the turn who knows eh? These turns take less time because it's yucky weather. All right, so uh, I guess the big action was the Japanese sailed their fleet out here, did a counter invasion, retook the territory. Um, they lost a unit doing so. They didn't actually really catch the Americans. They got a weird air duel between naval air units. Uh, you can't abort on, on the first round of combat. And I managed to actually kill two U.S. air units by getting a surprise attack gave me a higher air attack value hit one of them and then when it did its counter attack it cleared me which gave me a bounce on the other one it actually took them both out uh, killed one of the pilots too so that's pretty impressive uh, i don't think i've seen an air attack like that over here uh, the germans didn't go for an attack with the rain going hmm that removed that we got good weather now on the next impulse and sometimes i forget to record what's going on with the weather uh, even though you know I've got it here because it's all good I'm just like oh I don't need to place anything yeah I gotta remove some things um, over here the Germans positioned themselves uh, to get a better attack in and and yeah we've got supply running over here from who's that Rundstedt. Ah, oh, we had that question before. I see the R. I think maybe it's Rommel out there. I don't know where he is. Um, and Italians moving down on the Persian border. Iraqis moving in. Uh, if we can clear Persia out of the way, that'll be pretty potent. And over here, you've got Italians and Turks moving their way in. I've got a couple of air units to move. I'm not quite sure what to do. So this anti-air here scared the Brits away from committing their plane. The attack there'd be a fair chance of them losing an airplane because of that a fairly expensive plane without getting any any effect in it and i'm kind of looking at geez we've lost egypt i mean we're not going to get there in time um so these forces pushing through they got a breakthrough got across the suez and that's pretty potent actually um i think i'm going to just try to evacuate what little crap I have. We also have Italians getting into position here. They did a land move. Germans did a land move as well, continuing to move towards Spain. The rain kept us quiet for a moment. Um, the next Italian impulse, they could bring in Portugal, I think is pro-Italian, isn't it? Portugal, Saudi Arabia. Remember, I did the bring miners in, so I can bring Portugal in. Spain's got some defense against that, but mainly I'm pretty helpless against it. I was hoping to get some U.S. troops over here, but I don't know. I don't, I've got some ships, but I don't have uh, transports in place for it. It's really, really tough to coordinate that uh, side of the board when I'm doing, you know, actions over here. Especially since I need my transports over here to do the island hopping campaign. I'm hoping to knock Japan out and kind of say, hey, screw it with Germany maybe. But, man, that doesn't make a lot of sense either. Um, and if we start seeing, you know, German armies garrisoning Libya or something, it's going to be hard for the Brits to just plow through here. So, we don't know what's going on. Uh, but we are going to another... Another set of impulses with the whiskies up. U.S. desire to take a naval action here in the Pacific, reinforce their position, try to hit this and, dis and, and damage the Japanese fleet tremendously. Um, the Brits also threw their navy in, but they, they're doing a combined operation. They, don't, they actually got intercepted here and took down some bombers on the way in. 
Uh, but the U.S. decision to involve themselves in a naval action, mainly for uh, the Pacific, they didn't really need it, but they're moving some ships into place over here. They've got, uh, they did some submarine movement and, and a few other things, uh, transporting ships that were kind of out of place. That meant that they're foregoing preparing their Spaniards uh, for the invasion term. They can't move any Spanish units because they're taking naval action over in the Pacific. And you, you could say, look, you know, uh, you don't want the U.S. being in charge of the miners or whatever if you're doing a Pacific um, campaign. But they were the ones who had the opportunity to trigger Spain. Um, you would have to really, really machinate things to make sure that you got the miners right in the right countries. I'm pretty pissed because the Italians have Hungary, but there was only so much I could do about it. I would have much rather had, you know, certainly from the German point of view, the Germans with Hungary, the, the Italians having it is just kind of, okay, great, what do I do with it? Well, I'm using them in some duties in Yugoslavia. Uh, but we do have this big naval battle going on right here. And the way we're gonna resolve that, it's good weather. We're both on the five. Let's see if anybody gets involved. Uh, the U.S. or somebody is flipping a unit. Okay, well, nobody found each other. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, I don't know what to flip. Uh, but, yeah, you know, and now the Japanese have the entirety of the Allied Navy here committed they can throw in their big carrier force or whatever, but they can do other things instead. Um, they can send some battleships maybe to support an attack over here. They can't really do shit against Hong Kong. It's so well defended. Or in the Philippines, you know, they have a lot of other opportunities they could uh, take in, adv in addition to just trying to swamp this with the rest of their fleet. So this was a risky move. The Allies were hoping to be able to knock out most, well, maybe not most, but half the Japanese fleet for the turn at least. And of course the Japanese would still be able to do whatever they like because the US has committed their Navy. Uh, over here, I couldn't figure out what to do with the British Navy. I've actually got additional British Naval moves, but I don't dare move out of, uh, uh, out of England because I know the Germans are gonna uh, go to war. And the question is, do they go to war with me and with Spain and try to do some kind of weird first strike? They didn't move their Navy out into, uh, into the North Sea. So my feeling is they're gonna leave that uh, up to me. And I get to do it for free if I take the, the decision right away. So uh, that's kind of cool, but I lose I think my surprise bonus if I do that. I don't know. It only seems reasonable. <laughs> anyway. Uh, not quite sure what I want to do there. So far this is an absolutely terrible impulse for the Axis. First of all, the Germans took a full air move. Look at all these planes. I knocked one Spanish unit out. I don't get to attack, I just did a pure air uh, uh, move. But the idea was, hey, flip a bunch of these guys, pound my way through, make it so the uh, Spaniards have to pull their w way off that line or whatever. I didn't bring Portugal in because they only have like one unit. This is enough to keep me at bay, actually. There's too much chance of all of Portugal falling. That wouldn't be any good. Once I take Spain, Portugal's resources go to my Italians anyway. So, no big deal there. Okay, well, great. Swedes, airstrikes. Uh, Swedes and Finns and Germans and all kind of airstrikes were taken here. Uh, we got a partial success here. We knocked out a couple of units. That's cool. Sent some German air into the North Sea. Over here on the Russian side, I think we managed to flip one unit airstrikes all over the place here. <sighs> Doesn't look good at all. The Italians managed uh, to clean out it, uh, Egypt. They've captured everything of Egypt over here. They haven't taken these territories yet, but uh, they take, took uh, Somalia. Uh, the British 
side of Somalia. And, you know, overall they're doing pretty well, continuing their movement towards Persia. Uh, these guys up here. For the Japanese, this is where things really start getting ugly. I split my forces. I sent one strike force and all the carriers, for some reason, I'm going to keep these battleships with them. Um, I sent some carriers and battleships, which I probably shouldn't have done, but I'm hoping to take Singapore. I got a successful airstrike into Singapore. I have very few airstrikes uh, to do with the Japanese, but I was hoping to, uh, to get further than I did, but I may have enough to take it as it stands. <sighs> the rest of the Japanese fleet moved into here, and you can see I've got positionings all over the place. Well, here's my uh, surprise roll. The Americans got a four, which means they're going to bring these two columns, the three and four, into play. The Japanese got a ten. That means uh, my difference here, or, or my surprise value, is going to be uh, 10 for the Japanese plus 5 for the box that the U.S. is in. That's 15 points for them. Japanese uh, get 4 plus 5 for the box they're in. There's air power that gives a modifier of 1, uh, which gives them to a 9. So it's going to be a 6 surprise point for the U.S. I could do this as a naval, uh, as, a, as a fleet action which might be advantageous oh, uh, and pick on these carriers here or this set of carriers. Either way the Japanese have a lot more air power than they have naval uh, in terms of uh, battleships etc. These guys are kind of scary. I think there's a couple of heavy battleships in here somewhere. There gotta be a couple of heavy ones kicking around somewhere. Those are not. I don't know you know, I have like the Yamato and stuff like that floating around out here. I don't know if they're hiding under these carriers. Doesn't look like it. Not quite sure where they are. <laughs> I have a couple big Japanese battleships, and I thought I sent them into this pool. Oh, there they are. Oh, those are all carriers. Hmm. Oh no, these are not carriers, these are battleships. Okay, yeah, this is my big battleship line. So I probably want to pick on the carriers first. Um, and, and launch my attack there. I can do an air attack against them uh, without spending any actions. I think I'll spend the four though for the naval action and I'm, I'm gonna probably light them up pretty big. So the Japanese are gonna take a big naval defeat here, I suspect and the Germans essentially crapped out completely on their air attacks. So, <laughs> and of course, uh, I, I think Britain's gonna call themselves into the war rather than spend the resources on it. They have the resources to spend to s try to save up and do a, a surprise attack. But you know, I, I just don't see much value to, to trying to do so. I just wanna make sure the Germans don't get a surprise naval action on me. Crown losses weren't too bad. Yes, there's not much left, but I still have this huge carrier force, so the Japanese decide to stick around. They'd really like to wipe out the Allied Navy or cause it a big another hurt. Um, this maybe isn't the best situation, but man, this was looked so optimal to begin with. Now we're probably about even. Um, a bunch of ships went home. There were a couple of damaged, but honestly, we only actually took losses on a couple of cruisers. Um, the damages, as you can see, weren't too terrible. So, we decided to stick another round and we got another terrible result. The Allies are gonna be able to bring everything in now. This brings them uh, they're on the one table. That means uh, they have five, because I left these guys out. Uh, five plus eight is 13, whereas the Japanese are at five plus one is six. That's a seven point differential. Now, here's where it gets kind of iffy. The Allies could try for something more impressive and maybe try to sweep uh, this big stack down. Um, 
especially if they went with naval, with the uh, surface combat, they might be able to do something impressive. On the other hand, they could just take the easy kills and finish off a couple of Japanese carriers. That probably shouldn't have stuck around, but I was just hoping to bring them into play. Uh, of course, I could also do an air battle, but I don't really have an advantage in the air battle against this stack. I had one against this stack. To me, it feels like the Allies have sort of the inevitable, eventual victory. And the only way I can really lose the war is by having this massive naval battle, uh, you know, with things like the Yamato in there. So I think I'm going to go after these guys and give the Japanese the chance to get out again. Of course, the Japanese may just stick around some more, even though their search number sucks. The next round of surprise wiped out their next two carriers pretty easily. And the Japanese did stick around, hoping for an air battle still. They didn't get it. Uh, their force no longer looks as dominating, but they had to do what they had to do as far as I'm concerned. They did succeed, though, in taking uh, Singapore. The gunfire here supporting them that that's a pretty major blow uh, that means that the Japanese have the possibility of threatening uh, the Commonwealth from both directions and that may undermine this pretty much impenetrable line both sides are unable to, to gain any purchase there at all and I think that's it for the Axis turn, and I think that's well over it for me for the night. Uh, let me just check. We do not have a chance of the turn ending. We do have a weather wall, though, so we can get an idea what next month is going to be, our next impulse is going to be. So we're going to get rain in the northern monsoon and in the Arctic again. Not particularly great weather, but not terrible. I'm in the middle of uh, an Axis impulse, and but the Russians, they pulled back a little bit. And the uh, Allies movement along here. Some uh, little bit of uh, rationalization of the Spanish line. And also they attempted another naval battle, moved a few ships around to try to re get things back into location. Britain uh, took their free declaration of war. They don't want the surprise attack bonus. Um, and... What do we got? Uh, so, the Swedes set themselves up, but with the rain, they don't want to make the attack. There's a low chance. There's actually a fair chance the turn's going to end. I probably should do it, but I don't have a headquarters nearby. And it's about a 50-50 chance that I take Oslo. Oslo is not everything, but I do have a couple of bonuses. You know what? I'm going to do this. Uh, 12, 19, to 6. I could upgrade that with a bomber. 19, 24 to 6. 24 to 6 is going to be 4 to 1 on the assault. It's shifted down to only 3 to 1, but I've got plus 2, which means I need a 6. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Okay. The odds just are not good enough. Okay. Um, and we'll see. I'll probably end up regretting it because the turn's going to end. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but remember, I go last, which means we're going to have two shots at five. Yeah, I, I got to do it. I got to do it. Okay. So what did I say? Three to one plus two. And as usual, we don't get a very good roll. So we each take a loss. This thing's only at two. You know, this thing's probably less valuable. What did I say there? One one, I think. 
and that's going to flip. Let's see what kind of crap we got here. It's going to flip the Swedes over as well. It's not terribly good. Okay. Um, attacks also over here in Spain. We got a little bit of ground there. Uh, Italians. I guess kind of the exciting thing is we're on the African map, beginning to come down. There's a lot of resources in Africa. One of the best things we can do towards stripping uh, the alliance of its power is to take away its productive capabilities. And there's a fair amount of uh, resources in Italy, or in Africa. Italy will be able to get those, maybe give some to Germany, whatever. And maybe we can even up our production multiples, although we don't really have any money. Uh, and that's the same thing that's guiding the attack towards Persia, is try to strip the alliance of its resources, and India becomes threatened, etc. And try to turn this around. As it is, the Allies have some real resource problems. The British uh, shipping has been pretty much knocked out, as has the U.S., of uh, much of the... Pacific, one way or another, either actually attacked and sunk or just scared away in some cases. But they're not going to get all those resources coming in. Now, those resources can be stockpiled, I guess, uh, but how much value is there to that? Well, some, because we might be able to get them there, but we're going to have to start building some more convoys now. The ugly thing, let's see, the Japanese moving up captured Malaysia and again in that let's strip away their resources it's the only thing we have going for us but the Japanese stuck around here the Americans did not find them during the Allied turn the Japanese decide they want that air battle still they they really want to slam the US uh, force and part of it makes sense the Japanese Navy is almost completely built, which means we can start devoting resources to rebuilding the Japanese Navy if it gets damaged. But we have to, you know, get a fair attrition. Anyway, the first round was just an air combat round. The Japanese lost one of their uh, naval air units before they could abort. They have to fight around. And they were facing, you know, the entire U.S. Uh, air wing, but now we get sort of a maximal surprise. We had a roll of one versus zero. The U.S. has nine points. They're going to use four of those points to enforce that there's going to be a surface battle. Um, surface battle isn't necessarily great. There is a good Japanese surface force, but it's not parity with what the Allies have in terms of numbers, and their carriers are going to be subject to attacks because of that high risk number and then if the carriers get cleaned out there's no reason i the thing is there's no reason for the japanese to be here except they wanted this battle but they wanted it not to be a massive surprise against them anyway we'll see what happens from there the reason i really like playing solo is i can violate the sequence of play and yes it probably screws some things up but uh you know, in this case, I had already moved my Japanese land units and conducted my airstrikes, etc., before I got around to this naval combat because there was no effect of it all. Um, and that's important because for me to plan, I kind of have to move the pieces and figure out what I'm doing. And then I can say, okay, yeah, I can afford to do the combined action that allows me to do this naval activity. Uh, if I did it the other way, I would figure out what I wanted to do, do the naval action, it's a fairly complex uh, situation, and then I'd forget what the hell I was doing and probably not move any of my land units or anything anyway. Um, and if I followed the sequence of play, I wouldn't remember what the hell I was trying to do. So, the U.S. won that naval battle handily. They took down only one carrier, but they damaged... A, a bunch of the Japanese battleships. Basically, they could only target one ship, so they targeted a carrier for destruction. Themselves, they wanted to keep some flexibility uh, in the field, so they took their losses on light ships. They're beginning to run low on light ships. This is a real problem. Um, <laughs> however, the thing is, it's really hard to decide, I want to build light ships. If you need money, they're clearly a good way to go, but uh, 
it's certainly more important to rebuild what's here and we got some light ships in there that we can rebuild but you know you want to target the heavy ships because they've got more effectiveness but the problem is without a cover of light ships those heavy ships become much more fragile and that's all very cool it's just uh you know it is, it is beginning to look like it's uh, a difficulty for the u.s the japanese aren't completely wiped out they still have another battle fleet over here so uh, we're at about parity uh, i was thinking oh geez wow the japanese are screwed now i don't know if they really are they really would have liked to have won that battle or at least gotten an attrition result that was you know sufficient but they still have enough of a carrier force that they can do a lot of damage as long as they don't get surprised and the key to that of course is get themselves out to a good box it still doesn't guarantee anything um, you can get a really bad die roll like we had there and your fleet will suffer very heavily anyway uh rolled up the weather it's a, a very nice weather which may be a terrible thing for the swedish offensive because uh, i don't have a headquarters down there i wasn't able to recuperate the units so i got my attack in Norway and it wasn't successful. By the way, there were a huge number of units for Norway, I thought, but it turns out they're almost all really crappy naval units. Um, and they're not aligned, so if Norway falls, their navy is just going to disappear. Um, oh, we do have more, more impulses going. The question is, would the Axis get another round? because they chose to go so late in the round. There's the disadvantage to that. Uh, will they be able to get the advances they want? I'd really like to make it into the Mediterranean zone because then I can keep fighting. Uh, anyway, uh, I guess we keep moving on. Okay, well, uh, November, December here. And surprisingly, the weather is perfect <laughs> everywhere. All right, Russians uh, reposition some of their forces, but then let's look at what happened because initiative the allies again went with the hey we want to keep our initiative bonus you know if you don't use it for anything it doesn't count but there was no real pressing desire to do anything in fact in specific in the pacific i feel like you kind of don't want to get the first move in because doing that often means taking a naval move and sticking your toe out where it might get chopped off um i still I'm not comfortable with the naval rules. I'm comfortable with how I'm playing them, but they don't seem, at least in me, to generate reasonable styles of play. Uh, so, you know, because it's so easy to gang up on someone, if you get the advantage, it's huge. I'm always unwilling to send more than my best out. Or at least, if I do stick something out there to to react to to do something i keep my best in reserve so i can have a follow-up attack that may not be sufficient i might get my little initial uh push caught and lose it alternatively the opponent may commit some but what we're not seeing is these kind of multiple directions that the u.s uh favored and certainly the japanese did in their early assault but man we never had that opportunity right Ah, uh, oh boy. Serious, serious amounts of U.S. Uh, carrier power coming back into play. Um, you know, all that stuff that was going back for planes, it's got new planes. It's going to take a while to get there, though. Um, okay, so here in Europe, Germans took an air action. Eh, and then I cheated and did a land action afterwards. Shit. God damn it. Oh, well, I, I can't undo it. I mean, this is the problem. You know, I do this air action, and then I'm like, oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> well, at least I didn't... No, I did it over here, too. Yeah, I did the grand offensive accidentally again. Oops. No wonder things turned out so well. So, yeah, the Germans broke through here in Spain. Uh, the Swedes took Norway. Woo! And this is what an offensive chit would have allowed. Now... I don't know how much chance there would be to react to this situation, but the Spaniards could have plugged the hole that got blown open. But I can't go back. Um, the Italians actually took a land action, uh, continuing their way down here. 
I didn't cheat with them. They declared war on Persia and did some air activity there. See, the problem is that, you know, I place the planes, I do the thing, and then I know, oh, it's time for my land actions, you know? <laughs> Especially if I look at the sequence of play or remember it. Uh, if I forget about that and I'm focusing on the activations, I'm like, you know, I was so proud of myself, though. I'm kind of getting used to these activation limits and everything. And eh, no, bullshit. <laughs> I still want to do everything. Oh, well. You know, um, so what's interesting here is the Italians are actually uh, beginning to threaten India, and the Brits are going to have to do something about that. The Japanese did a land action, largely because I couldn't figure out a damn thing to do with them at all. Uh, in specific, um, I didn't want to bring my navy out. I don't have an invasion force. The only thing it could have done is it could have gotten me a moderate chance of an attack at the Philippines here, or if I swung my direction south, I could have probably taken this guy out. Um, other than that, I didn't have enough power, air power, to blast my way through the Russians. I pretty much failed there. And by, and by the way, I pretty much failed in Spain. You know, if I had chosen the right couple planes there, <laughs> I'd have gotten this result, because basically I bombed one stack and, and moved in. Then I used the artillery uh, to take the second stack out and uh, you know so it's not that unreasonable but in terms of game rules in terms of you know historical accuracy man <laughs> the Luftwaffe craps out so much and I am not I don't know I don't feel like I'm ca capable of making an attack without ground strikes and but the ground strikes really are low odds um, but making attacks that are less than like, you know, towards the top of the chart is just stupidity. You, you just don't want to do it. Um, so I, I, these limits just feel way too low to me. And the Germans also succeeded sort of here. They made an attack and then recovered uh, the infantry. And of course I was cheating there too, uh, not following limits. Somewhere the Germans got a free offensive chit again. You know, it happens, right? <laughs> All right, let's see what the allies can do. And no, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna counter cheat to try to, to balance things out. I, I don't think it really does, you know. Um, the Germans probably should be buying offensive chits, but they don't have that kind of resources. Uh, they're building their navy, right? Which they can't use because of, you know, activation limits. <laughs> is doing the best that they can in a pretty ugly situation. Transported some U.S. and British forces into Spain. Um, if we can channel enough troops in there, it'll, it'll be pretty damn useful. The problem is the Germans kind of have an opening here, and they're going to start rolling back the, the Spanish force. Um, converting Saragossa so that I can unflip that's already a white bordered unit so it's pretty potent so I'll unflip these two units but there's sort of this channel running through here that's you know there's some it's not easy but the there's this weird sort of you can kind of ooze through the cracks in this game in a way that you usually can't in a war game um, Anywhere else, anything exciting happening over here in the Pacific? Not a whole hell of a lot. The U.S. sent its new carrier force out. Now, this is an interesting target. It's a carrier force in the two zone. The Japs could slide in through the Central Pacific where there's nothing. Maybe I want to fly a plane. Um, and make their way... Uh, into the marshals and attack this big carrier fleet. But if they don't catch it, they're going to get cut off in an obnoxious position. And uh, that may not be worth it. Especially since, you know, if I send the fleet out, that's five or six oil I lose, you know? <laughs> um, and the Japanese don't have a whole hell of a lot left over. They're sitting on uh, a decent amount. And the U.S., I think actually dropped down below 200. The Russians are beginning to drop down. Uh, 
the Russians are using it for production. That's their problem. Brits shifting forces in India uh, onto the Persian border, preparing themselves uh, for trying to help protect against an Italian attack there. Really not a whole hell of a lot that they're able to do in any kind of reactive sense, but they're doing what they can to patch holes and the weather came out good for them. Uh, we got snow up here, which is gonna slow things down. We actually did some bombing raids too, uh, some tactical bombing to try to screw with the Germans. I gotta look to see what kind of strategic bombing I may have because that's my way of screwing with the German production. Um, I haven't really been focusing on them because I wasn't looking at being at war with Germany until I took Japan out. And well, we can see that hasn't really worked. Um, they're in a stalemate, but that's not good enough to can't you know to to get me into a position where I can deal with the Germans. Um, and then, you know, the Brits actually have the capability of marching through the desert because they can put a boat out here. And, you know, honestly, that kind of makes sense. Um, so Tripoli is on the East Med and the East Med having sea, uh, having any kind of sea supply through there, will get me supply through all of this. That's just not what it feels like when you're playing Africa or, uh, Desert Fox or anything like that. It feels like the shipments are all coming to Tripoli and I, and I gotta haul them down here. But you know, in terms of actual effect, you need to have some sort of uh, shipping to get you into Africa to begin with. I haven't really done anything here. I don't know what to do. You know, the Italians have real units down here. They're gonna roll through whatever they face, but it's not like I can retreat all my units down to South Africa or something like that because these are territorials and half of them have to stay in the country. All right, well, uh, the bad weather came a turn too late to really save Spain from being damaged and to save Norway at all. Uh, and now we've got some interesting calls. You know, you've got like some allied fleets, a lot of transport capability here. Maybe it's worth sending the German fleet out to see if I can wipe that out. It's snow, you know, what the hell? It's not like I can play on the land, right? But yeah, Germany unleashed their Navy to just about no effect. You can see they're all out here. They failed to get a, uh, any of the allied units. They sent subs out. They had a success here and uh, did some serious damage to the uh, both the British and American shipping. Over here for the Japanese, they also decided, hey, let's have that big naval confrontation. Now they split their force. They sent the, major the almost all of their navy uh, out to uh, the Marianas again, try to catch these cruisers. That sets them up for a port strike. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing because there's so many U.S. carriers here. I don't know that I'll be doing that. And that's kind of the, oops, you know, I just committed my force. And is that what I really wanted to do? Because now the U.S. have the capability to do something directly up here in the China Sea. Now, you can kind of get around that. Like I could have sent some Japanese ships here, but they could have just gotten picked off then and that's kind of the trouble now here i was really hoping to catch them because i have a big surface fleet uh, that i was hoping to catch these carriers with didn't happen um, i'm expecting the u.s to take a naval move though next um, <laughs> to respond and probably the brits to uh, try to trap the german fleet if they can here of course, there's still the big question mark of the Italian fleet hasn't come out, and it can, because the Italians did a land move, mainly so that they could advance in Persia, and then also they're advancing into the Sudan. Uh, and it's quite possible Italy might take all of Africa with this little force, uh, because they can expo expose a couple of their East African units Anyway, uh, whoa, 
what was the other thing? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Russia went before the Germans did. And you can see they cleared out a couple of uh, key hexes. So this guy's no longer in supply. That's not really a big deal. I'll be able to move him back into supply and get uh, counterattacks, or I could have, but I didn't because I needed to do that naval move, right? Uh, so the Russians have some capability to maybe do some significant damage. Um, basically, the Germans exposed themselves uh, by their attack to a possible counterattack. On the other hand, it could mean that the Allies, instead of reacting to this Navy right away, leave their, they, they can uh, board their ships. Um, uh, I don't know if they can without a naval action, actually. Uh, but they could move some of their Spaniards and, and the Brits and such not to try to cover better. Because we've got things to worry about. The Japs didn't take a naval move. They took a combined action, and they're marching up towards Siam, uh, or through, through Siam, up towards Bangkok, and putting a threat on the uh, Allied position here, you know, we really can't afford to be attacked from both directions. I don't know how likely that is. This, I've got to protect my supply line, etc. I could always rail uh, these engineers up to Bangkok. It's probably a good idea anyway, once I capture Bangkok, to convert the major port over to my hands. Um, I don't think the Brits ever converted it, but it, it was destroyed in the, in the battle, so. It's just a minor port right now. <sighs> really hoping to nail these things. That that's what's so. There's nothing like it in the land combat. In the land combat, you got at least the way I I see it. You got risky combat roles, but you've got the oh, uh, let's make sure I don't get a risky combat role and commit my planes first. Try to flip units, and then it's pretty much you know either. Well, I either want to go or I don't. You know, <laughs> if you succeeded in flipping, you probably are going to be able to just run over the enemy. With the naval combat, you can put out a force that looks overwhelming and just not find the enemy. And then you're exposed to their counterattack in a way that you're not in the land combat. It's very exciting uh, to me and is actually probably the most... I, I, I'm really getting a lot of enjoyment out of the naval game, even if it, it seems like bullshit. You know, <laughs> this is not what was done historically. I don't know if I'm, you know, misplaying the system, or which I don't really know that I am. I mean, not the rules, but not catching the strategic implications of a naval situation. I wouldn't put it past me, but it feels like. This is really actually how you want to conduct naval operations here. You want to slam into the enemy and win that attrition war. Uh, especially given Japan's position right now, they have nothing they can defend. You know, they're, uh, Japan's almost exposed. And there is a danger there, which is that at some point or another, my U.S. forces are going to be able to come after Japan itself. And the troops in the Philippines you know, I may not need the Philippines. Because I can come out one, two, three, four, and I can do an invasion fairly reasonably from that box. Uh, most, of my, most of my transports are going to be four-speed units. Um, it would be much better if I could get a major port, though. But Manila is not actually any closer. Oh yeah, it's on the it's on the divider. This is really a weird part of the map because the sea divide is here, but the um, weather divides don't match the sea divides. Not sure, how this is all going to turn out? Um, the Allies are going big on the naval. You can see they sent the U.S. and Brits out here. They sent a bunch of forces out here. Now this is they're getting out of the Mediterranean as much as anything else to. Uh, be able to eventually cope with the Germans because the Italian fleet is not as dangerous to me being in the Mediterranean. I've lost most of the Med. Uh, it could serve some danger though if an invasion says 
uh, launched in Algeria or something like that. And it could cut my supply line that I need this railway for. And I could be in some significant trouble if the Italians are clever. They do have uh, some transport. I don't know if they have any Marines left anywhere, though. Um, I'm also hunting the German subs, which is a big deal. The cool thing, though, the British fleet sailed out. It made it in here. Some of the British fleet sailed out of London. Some of it was over here in Plymouth. Uh, and it got caught by the Swedish fleet and, well, most specifically the German airplanes in a surprise situation, eight points of surprise. Two huge British ships with one defense factors were damaged. I took destructions on them because, well, I'll get them back pretty quickly, but I have to pay the repair costs. Maybe I should have taken something lighter. I don't know. It was mainly battleships coming out, but those are there along with a lighter ship. Um, lost a ship, got sunk, and then the Brits managed to slip away not getting hit in the second round so that they've got, you know, more facing the German Navy. I really want to wipe out the German Navy. The German Navy scares me. The Swedish Navy does not. But these potent airplanes here, uh, I was unable to send carriers because just wasn't a far enough distance. And with the snow, they're probably not going to be terribly helpful. Uh, but, <laughs> well, the snow doesn't prevent an air battle. That's, uh, Storms do, snow doesn't. If it does, the Brits wouldn't have taken any damage there at all. Um, but it does reduce the uh, factors for them. So. Um, but those German planes are pretty potent. They were able to do a lot of damage. And now we'll make our checks. We also are engaging the Allied fleet up here. Boy, that doesn't look very potent, but I've got a lot of aircraft carriers. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want an air battle if I can help it, because um, there aren't very many. This is the stack of Japanese non-plane units, and I've got the advantage of rain, so yeah, that may not really help me, but it does reduce the air battle thing. And then over here, I'm more interested in the air battle, but I wanted to provide some protection to my fleet, so I threw some uh, surface ships in there. So we got a lot of work cut out for us here. Um, and ignoring the land battle in Spain. Hey, we can't fight, you know. Uh, not because it's snow. We can't maneuver. We can't do anything. It's because we sent the fleets out. And nobody found each other anywhere. <laughs> it is raining and snowing and all that. All right. Uh, I guess that means a weather roll. We have a plus one to the die roll. At this point that gets us two. Hey, the weather got good again. The weather made things get pretty intense. I wish I'd gotten a shot of where the Russians had gotten to because they really kind of plowed into the Germans, but they flipped some of their units in doing so. And you can see the Germans have recovered and caused, uh, you know, a breakthrough up here basically that's really threatening the entire Russian line. I'm going to have to suck back uh, and this area becomes in danger then um, with this rail link coming across. That's, that's really problematic. In terms of losses, you know, it's not too big, but this is pretty much what the Germans lost. And here, of course, is all that the Russians lost. Um, the Italians continued moving on, but I really need to get a strike against this unit and drop that strength down. I have like a two to one attack, I think, here. Yeah. So uh, I recovered my planes and am preparing for more attacks. <clears throat> Assuming the weather holds. The Japanese unable to get any purchase on, on the Russians there. Uh, and they did a land move as well. Mm passing on the opportunity to try to do something with the naval, like even just get out of here. Uh, moving up through Siam still, that's probably the biggest threat that we're providing. Basically, I had a lot of units to move into place against the Russians. Uh, so that's really kind of why this thing 
This thing's got a problem, actually. I've got to make a check to see if he surrenders or whatever. Over here, and so the problem, though, for the Germans is not simply that they suffered some early setbacks because of the winter, the snow, uh, the white print Russian units were able to kind of hose them. And then, uh, you know, they, because the Germans did the naval move, the Russians got an extra move in there. Well, now the German counterattack seems to have stemmed any problem with that. The problem is the number of German units that are in reserve back here that aren't on the front line anymore. Russia has a huge partisan value. And if I'm not, you know, conduct, if I don't have a stiff reserve over there, I've got to start moving some units in. And so I've started peeling some Romanians out of Poland and other forces here. Conquest of Norway is underway and nearly complete. Spain, we oozed in, took out the headquarters, and you can see uh, Spain's, the Pyrenees are pretty much being... Uh, subverted completely there. But that means the German Navy didn't get to try to do something here. Of course, there's no real advantage to the German Navy doing something. It's not like there's a whole hell of a lot of reinforcements that the Allies can bring in. These are uh, where the big fleet battles are. But if I took an action, I could uh, pull my ships out if I, I didn't like the situation. Oh, these are Swedes. They look like Commonwealth units, and I'm wondering, why am I sending Commonwealth ships out there with no air protection and a bunch of German air out there? Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> that's not the case. You know what? I forgot to move my Italians, too. coming off these cities but I gotta be careful because I don't have a supply source down here except this guy I think I can trace through here if I do this I think I have to own the hex to trace and some of these three to one does not sound good um, anyhow, what was it I had to deal with? Crap, now I've forgotten. Well, I'll have to find it. I put something aside and said, oh, I have to do this. And now I can't remember what it is. I'm in the midst of the Allied Impulse, but as is often my want, I'm, uh, I came to something interesting. So I want to catch you up to what's going on. So the Allies did combined moves. They had some land moves they wanted to take care of here, and we'll see in Spain as well. Um, and uh, they won the battle here in the Marshalls. Now, how big a deal is it? Well, maybe not that big. They damaged a carrier. I think they sunk one, uh, one light cruiser. You know, they didn't really trash the Japanese force but they managed to get an engagement there and cause some damage. Some of it's the oil factors. There's another factor in here, and this is, has to do with the cheating element. Um, I don't cheat only on the Axis <coughs> behalf. Uh, there may be a tendency towards that simply because they're most likely on the offense, but the shipping rolls in this are such a pain in the ass to maintain. So uh, we'll see if I can do it properly with Japan as well. But quite often shipping's getting disrupted and I'm not always fully sure that I'm taking complete account of it. And this probably affects the Commonwealth more than anyone else, although Japan at this point is beginning to get disrupted as well. Uh, there was also a naval battle here, but it only turned out to be an air fight, I think. Uh, this one did too, but... Um, where this Japanese plane engaged all the carrier planes that had fighter capability, <coughs> fought one round, shot one U.S. carrier down against all the odds, survived, and then there was not a second round. Over here, the uh, Commonwealth managed to blow up a couple of uh, convoy points, 
The rest of the convoy should be ducked into here. Oh, here it is. So Japan didn't lose a lot of tonnage, but they lost a lot of their cargo capacity uh, for transferring goods from China. Now this is where things get really tough because there's some factory capacity in China. Uh, there's at least two there. There may be another one kicking around somewhere. There's also capacity over here in Manchuria, in Seoul, in Vladivostok. So some of those supplies are getting produced and turned into something. And some of them are getting, uh, are, are going to have to be shipped back to Japan for the factories to work. But this is a huge hit against the Japanese uh, processing. And honestly, I don't think Japan starts with enough ships to handle the resources that I've been pulling in. So I think I've been cheating in their favor there as well. Uh, I know the Commonwealth, I haven't been able, you know, I haven't really consolidated, hey, do I have enough to really pull everything through? Because they too have a factory over, well, a couple of factories here in India. They have one over in Australia. However, there's a lot of resources here and a lot of resources in Africa. And, you know, back when everything was neutral, well, I guess, they still had to transfer across here. And I don't think I was accounting for all the resources that they're pulling over right now, which is something like 20 resources. Um, <clears throat> and I've got, you know, 10 points of shipping here in the North Atlantic. You know, let's see what the Commonwealth has. Yeah, they're pulling 21 from overseas. So all those resources have to be being shipped there. And I haven't been really paying too much attention to that, obviously. Uh, which is something you have to keep in mind is you have to expend some of your resources on constantly building convoys due to the disruption, but also due to your gear up. You don't have enough convoys to carry all your resources to the homeland. I probably have enough to come close to those values and who knows beyond that. And oil, I think, gets shipped for free if it's not a resource, if it's not being used in production or something like that, which confuses me. Anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, I forgot to make a quick roll to see if the Brits catch that Japanese. Nope. And now, you know, this is their one chance to search. Over here, they did a search on this convoy. Uh, they also reorganize and move some ships around probably more than they could uh do, do, do. what was i going into oh yeah okay so we have our showdown here in the bay of biscay there was uh, a battle here the subs got chased away they didn't want to stick around for asw against that kind of force just doesn't seem worth it although it means i'm going to be spending oil where do i get it from well I'm allied with them. They'll, they'll sell me oil. Uh, I'm going to be spending oil to, uh, to recharge them. Uh, now, here we've got, this is what came out of uh, the Bay of Biscay battle. Again, a surprise in favor of the, of the allies they have. I think I said there were seven points. They have three remaining. Um, that three remaining is going to allow me to target an enemy ship. Now, here's what's weird. To me, airstrikes should be easier to target against an enemy ship than uh, naval, the surface combat. But I'm gonna be able to target against the Graf Zeppelin here with surface combat factors. These guys aren't gonna be able to provide any kind of strict screen, although that would probably be their absolute utmost um, goal. It wouldn't matter how many ships I had, if I have that three surprise points, I'm able to jump it in there. And the fact that that works the same way, uh, whether I have air units attacking or, uh, or surface units, that kind of bugs me. That's what I kind of went to go look at. The Germans kind of would like to stick around. They've got a significant navy here, but I don't know if they can afford to. Uh, so we'll probably just fight one round and then pull out with everything. Um, we do have a safe way out. German fleet scattered, and I think it was a good idea uh, after I looked at them. There were some heavier battleships in the German fleet than anything the Allies had, but the Brits had a couple. Well, I don't know if they had any battleships. Yeah, I don't think there were any battleships on the Allied side, but a bunch of cruisers 
is better than a small number of battleships. Um, what was actually faced was just what was in one box because the Germans got themselves scattered into multiple boxes for higher search chances. There were a lot of subs. There was a force that was planning on, I don't know where the hell it was planning on landing. Why don't we land? No, we can't land in Bilbao. That's the problem. I, I was planning on landing in Bilbao after I, you know, moved some forces out of there, but I didn't get enough movement to move forces out of Bilbao, so we ended up landing in, like, Bordeaux instead, which, you know, is a very slow unit. It's a garrison unit, so it really wouldn't be terribly valuable there. Um, and I guess, since I'm on camera, we might as well do the partisan check. The biggie here is if Russia comes up, that's painful. It looks like they're not going to. We do have the possibility of a problem in China, though. China has a fair size number, and there aren't all that many Japanese units outside of zone control in China, so we may see something there. As I start to do the production uh, on the Japanese and the Commonwealth, sort of the two folks most hit by the uh, shipping problems, <laughs> and both really are. They had to dig deeply into their oil reserves. It's interesting with Japan, they've got like extra resources back here, and actually so does Britain, but I'm not too worried about Britain trying to haul their extra resources, so I'm not bothering to stockpile them. I probably should. They've probably got a pile of them in Africa somewhere. Um, but, yeah, I, I should. Um, but anyway, I'm not sure I want to pile them up, because if I stockpile them, that makes them a target. I can't just destroy them anymore. I, have to uh, have to actually uh, you know leave them there and if the Italians are sweeping through Africa well <laughs> we may not want stocks of them uh, the thing is though West Africa it's unlikely that they're gonna come out of there South Africa that's where these are gonna conglomerate uh, anyway I'll let that be as it will uh, I've got some thinking about the zero-point planes. The Brits built one of them because, well, why not? And they built other planes, too. I, I don't know what they're meant to represent. It seems ridiculous to me. I know they're shitty, and I know they're probably cheap to build, but it seems absolutely ridiculous to me that you can build something uh, for nothing. That it, you might as well do it if you've got the gearing limits. Um, <laughs> I... Maybe they're meant to represent some kind of political patronage or something that really can't be gotten rid of and you're going to have to build these throughout the whole war because otherwise they just don't make any sense. Um, in this case, what do we, what do we got built here? Uh, I can't read. Gladiators. I don't know how long they kept gladiators in play. But, you know... It's just, uh, it's really kind of annoying to see <laughs> these kind of planes getting, uh, getting built. And you might as well, because you can stock them over here. You don't have to put them, you know, you don't have to put pilots on them if you don't want to. And then if you take heavy carrier plane losses, you can restock them. It's especially important over here for Japan, who can recycle their planes very quickly. So... They, they certainly want to get those guys out. Right, so we're moving into 1944. I did the production. You know, the actual production is not getting hurt, but the oil reserves really are getting eaten up. And this is kind of a weird thing. If you were playing without oil reserves, or without resource reserves either, um, Britain would be in a lot of trouble. Japan would be in a lot of trouble right now. But playing with them, yeah, it puts a, 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 an extra burden in the game, but it also gives these countries more staying power because they have some, some uh, resources that they can call upon. Russia especially. Russia, uh, m much, of their, uh, much of their resources are gone, but they've saved most of their factories. So now they're also only at three quarters because eh, whatever. Um because I'm probably cheating there, but uh, I'm eating up my oil resources to make the, the army able to stay and 
continue to fight basically <laughs> to keep re reinforcing uh, the forces um, but everybody else is too the germans are uh, well no the germans are eating up their oil resources to use their units uh, but certainly the brits and the american well the brits and the japanese are uh, burning through stockpiled oil norway doesn't have any production capability nobody's really seeing any reason to like put a militia out there or whatever for them so uh, they're gonna just get wiped out all right let's send this up